Quranic science. A few of the correct claims in the Quran were already extant among the prevailing religions such as Christianity and philosophers of the earlier times. For example, in the Prophet's account of embryology, we can easily determine its scientific inaccuracy, which we will address later, in addition to its obvious plagiarization from earlier works by Greek philosophers and scientists such as Galen, Hippocrates, Aristotle, or Indian theses on the subject by Charaka and Susruta. The four stages of embryology shown in the Quran is actually described by the Greek physician Galen, writing around 150 CE, some 500 years earlier. It should also be noted that one of Muhammad's companions, Harif ben Kilada, studied at the school of Jandi Shapur in Persia and would have been well acquainted with the teachings of Aristotle, Hippocrates and Galen. On occasion the Quran or Hadith may have postulated things that actually have turned out to be right. I see this coincidence can be explained in the same way that Darwin explained evolution, i.e. given that there have been thousands of religions since the dawn of man, only the strongest survive, i.e. those that got some things right or indeed proliferated by conquering or fear of the unknown such as eternal torment in hell will survive today. Dawkins writes in detail the way in which cultural traits and patterns evolve and become the norm by describing them as memes. Nevertheless, I am yet to be convinced by any claims that are postulated as miracles in the Quran. However, for argument's sake, let's say the Quran did predict things in advance that it could not possibly have known at the time. There are also many other historical figures who claim to have done so. Does that also make them prophets of God if they claimed they were? Were scientists such as Epicurus divinely inspired? The best example is a famous Latin poem summarizing Epicurean philosophy, 341 BC to 270 BC, some 1000 years earlier, which in my opinion far outdoes the Quran in both clarity and quantity of marvelous scientific predictions. Here are some of these amazing facts, but the list continues. 1. The existence of the atom and the molecule, the binding of two atoms to produce a different chemical. 2. Earthquakes are caused by slipping fault lines, etc. Should anyone say divine intervention helped explain these findings in 300 BC? Was Epicurus inspired by God? I would say a firm no. He just got lucky. He knew nothing of wave mechanics, the Compton radius, or Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. He was simply trying to solve what he saw by drawing largely on empirical observation. So too the Prophet was simply trying to state what was obvious to him, that God is the one who made the earth and the heavens so vast. This is quite probable. Since Muhammad demonstrated he knew nothing about the difference between stars and galaxies, for example, and only the latter are expanding away from each other. The stars within our galaxy, which comprise by far most of what Muhammad would have imagined as the visible heavens, are not expanding, but are held in place by gravity. Just imagine the lost opportunity here. Allah could have given Muhammad the most incredible proof of scientific prescience by having him describe the difference between star systems and galaxies, or even stating Hubble's law of expansion, perhaps with exact figures, at least the added point that bit of expansion is accelerating. But no, all he gave him was the incredibly vague Surah 51, 47 to 49, we are the ones who make it vast. There is nothing scientific about that. Then of course, Claims that have since been proved wrong by religions are often swept under the carpet which, with claims of I do not understand or we cannot question God or its mistranslation are made. Although the Quran describes a flat earth, we find Muslims today adamant that the Quran portrays an ostrich egg shaped one. 
although this claim is made what I call text massaging. 20 years ago they claimed it said it meant spherical. 1400 years ago they claimed it meant flat. Now the evolving definition of the word Dahata fits in with our understanding of science at the time. The word Daha that is actually used means to spread out or to flatten. As science has proved this to be wrong, some Muslims have managed to miraculously circumvent this dis definition and say the Quran says otherwise. If tomorrow the earth was proved to be flat, I am sure they would revert back to the original and correct definition of the word Daha. To underscore this point, there was a time when Muslim clerics would establish fatwas against those claiming to the earth to be spherical. It is known simply as confirmation bias, the way someone will interpret into a situation in accordance with their pre-existing belief pattern and is in stark contrast to objectivity. Other religions such as Christianity also make claims which their followers say can only be inspired by divine knowledge. For example, the Bible does say the earth is round. Without wishing to get involved too deeply about these claims, they are all wrong in any case. The earth is in fact oblate shaped, i.e. watermelon shaped, a sphere with flatter ends at the poles. Another example of confirmation bias is the way in which many Muslims will resort to only looking at Islamic scholars for explanations. Whereas most scientists will look across a range of sources and conduct their own investigations, test and then retest after eliminating control factors before even attempting to reach any hard found conclusions. In the last 250,000 years since man has existed, science has largely played little part in finding out the answers and only in the last 100 years has science made its exponential rise. Application of true scientific method, the sharing of knowledge and free inquiry have brought about this change and is the only true way to avoid error. Darwinian evolution in academic circles is now popularly accepted over and above the Islamic, Muslim and Christian myth of Adam and Eve and carbon dating of skeletons now contradicts the age of man according to the biblical scriptures. Replacing a human heart with a pig's heart, travelling to outer space, manufacturing of artificial limbs are all recent successes. But what will the next 1000 years bring? We will certainly further our understanding and continue to answer the remaining unanswered questions and it really would not surprise me where this may eventually lead. Perhaps even artificial creation of human beings? <laughs>